Well, first of all, thank you very much for being here, and it's uh, a real pleasure on behalf of the Irish government and the Irish people uh, to welcome Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to Ireland. Um, it's the first visit of an international Prime Minister to Ireland uh, since I was elected as Taoiseach, so you're particularly welcome. Um, and I know it's not your first visit to Ireland, uh, but you're um, extremely welcome again and welcome to visit any time. And it does, of course, follow on from uh, the uh, visit of former Taoiseach Enda Kenny to uh, Canada uh, only a few months ago. Uh, we had a very good um, uh, meeting this morning uh, talking about the many similarities and common interests that exist between our, 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 our two countries. Um, we are, of course, countries that are very different. We're in different parts of the world. Uh, Canada is very large uh, and we're very small, uh, but we do have a lot of similarities. Um, we have two, each uh, share a relationship with a very big neighbour a neighbour that has, to a certain extent, um, decided to go uh, in a different direction, at least for the time being. Um, and we have lots of other uh, shared interests and commonalities. And I think um, between our two countries and between our two governments, uh, we share a common outlook. Uh, and we're also very like-minded. Like uh, both countries and both governments are committed to multilateralism as the best means by which we can solve the world's problems and work together in order to do so. Uh, we're both very committed to free trade. Uh, as one of the best means to uh, create good jobs for um, the middle class, for the working class, uh, and also uh, to make us all uh, better off in the long run. We recommitted ourselves to um, uh, implementing CETA and all of the benefits that flow from that provision, provisional ratification as soon as possible uh, so that we can increase trade uh, between Europe and Canada. Uh, we also spoke about climate action. Uh, both countries, both Ireland and Canada, as you know, are committed to the Paris Accord and we agreed to work together in international forums to ensure uh, that uh, climate action is taken uh, and that we work together uh, to protect the plan for future generations uh, through implementation of the Paris Accord and all that involves in it. And we spoke, spoke on a number of things as well, the importance of um, uh, personal liberty, uh, the benefits of migration and our shared view uh, that countries like ours do best uh, if we're open to the world. Uh, so I had a very good meeting this morning, a very good conversation. The Prime Minister has a long programme for the day. Um, also uh, had a brief conversation where he shared with me some advice. Um, as you know, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is 18 months in office, so I think I'm about 18 days in office, so he's able to give me some good advice uh, on um, how to manage a new job. So you're very welcome, uh, very grateful to the visit, and I hope that you enjoy the stay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tishak Varadkar. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the Tishak his team and everyone here at Farmley for making us feel so welcome today. For our 150th birthday, we wanted to come here to Ireland, the ancestral home of so many Irish immigrants who helped build Canada. So many times over my life, visiting Cayleys or at small impromptu kitchen parties, I felt that famous Irish hospitality echoing down through the generations. And that's certainly been felt by all of us here today. Le Tishak et moi venons tout juste de terminer une rencontre positive. Comme mon homologue l'a mentionné, nous nous sommes entretenus sur plusieurs sujets. Nous avons notamment eu la chance de discuter de l'accord économique global et commercial conclu entre le Canada et l'Union européenne. CETA will give Canadian and Irish businesses greater access to each other's markets. It will deliver stronger economic growth, the kind of growth that benefits all citizens, not just the wealthiest, most important, it will create more good, well-paying jobs for workers on both sides of the Atlantic. Like Ireland, Canada is very much looking forward to the agreement coming into force. We also talked about the shared values that underscore our approach to trade and to just about everything else. Canadian and Irish citizens both want to leave to our children and grandchildren a better world than the one we inherited from our parents, a cleaner, more prosperous world one where every person has a real and fair chance at success. And we share a common commitment to diversity. We know that it's a source of strength, not weakness. Canadians and Irish alike understand that it's not enough to simply tolerate our neighbours. We need to embrace the things that make each of us unique, whether it's our gender, the language we speak at home, where we worship, or whom we love. And of course, we talked about the tremendous people-to-people -people connections that our two countries share. Irish Canadians helped to make Canada the country that it is today. Later today, I'm looking forward to visiting a memorial that marks one of the most significant moments in Canada's history and in Ireland's. I'm speaking of the famine memorial here in Dublin. 
This extraordinary sculpture depicts the departure of Irish migrants in the mid-19th century, fleeing the famine and seeking a better life overseas. In Toronto, we have its sister memorial. It's in Ireland Park on the shores of Lake Ontario, showing the arrival of Irish refugees in Canada. Seamus O'Regan, who's here with us today, hosted the dedication of Ireland Park when he was a journalist. Between May and October of 1847, more than 38,000 Irish Feynman migrants arrived in Toronto at a time where the city's population was just 20,000 people. The Irish presence had a profound impact on Canada at the time, and it's an influence that continues to be felt in just about every aspect of our lives in Canada. From the farms that grow our food, to the highways and bridges that connect us, from the music and books we enjoy, to the sports we play. Et ça va dans les deux sens. En mars, j'ai eu le privilège de rencontrer 50 jeunes, membres de la meilleure équipe de hockey de Dublin, les Flying Ducks. Nous nous sommes rencontrés à Montréal, où ils étaient hébergés par des familles et participaient au défilé de la Sainte-Patrick. Ils ont également pris part à un match de hockey amical. Ils ont même battu l'équipe de la région, mais on n'a pas besoin d'insister là-dessus. I mentioned those young hockey players because they're good examples of the ways in which our two countries continue to expand and celebrate our very common, uh, very special connection, person to person, united in friendship. So I really thank Leo for the warm welcome you've given us, the great friendship uh, uh, that has existed between Canada and Ireland over, over decades and generations. And mostly thank you for your great partnership as we move forward, be building uh, an even stronger future for our citizens. Thank you.